the mighty Cosmos Security Agency. How good could their security be to have a murder here? If the caller was on the level. Shots fired, male victim killed. Here we go. White male, approximately 50 years old. Blast hole in the thorax, approximately four inches. Shot from about 10 feet away with an energy pulse gun. I'll ID with a retinal scan. Don't bother. His name's Bennett Sands. I guess a couple of billion credits doesn't save you from having your heart incinerated. The question is, by who? There's no sign of forced entry. Do a DNA scan. There's still a strong genetic trace. Someone got pretty close to him in the last hour. Punch it up. Jake Cardigan. Didn't you work with him before? I put him away once. I can do it again. Call the precinct. I want him brought in. Winger. Save you the trouble. I'm already here. I told Sands to meet me here. We were involved in some business together. What kind of business? Software. This was next to the body. You got this to shoot Bennett Sands with, didn't you? Yeah, that's what I got it for. So, when Sands walked in, what happened? You argued first, or did you just shoot him in cold blood? I told you I'm guilty. Say it, Cardigan. You took aim at his chest and you blew a hole in it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, something like that. You want to try it again? It doesn't matter. I said I did it. It matters if I say it matters, my friend. This time I want enough evidence to have you freeze-dried and stuck on a rack for good. still get to see your kid before you get thought out. You don't cooperate. And you'll be sleeping on ice into the next century. Maybe someone will be around to throw you out. Maybe not. I told you I did it. You got that, you dumb mech. Now fuck me! This is Kylie Roman. This is Kylie Roman. Hi, 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 Kylie Roman. With Cable 921. This is Kylie Roman for Cable 921 with round the clock live courtroom drama. This morning, former police officer and ex convict Jake Cardigan is being arraigned for the murder of billionaire entrepreneur Bennett Sands. Because of Cardigan's previous conviction, in the murders of three police officers, he faces the maximum term in cryogenic detention. Yes. Jake, I talked to Bascom and he's getting you a lawyer. <sighs> Tell me if you get it. Can you give us a minute? Look, you gotta let us help. I, for one, am not gonna stand by and watch you self-destruct. I need to get this over with as soon as I can. Don't even try to understand. Let's go. Jake, you can't go away again. I love you.
How do you plead? I plead guilty, Your Honor. Ms. McKenzie, any chance of saving the taxpayers some money on this one? Your Honor, Mr. Cardigan was arrested last night for the murder of Bennett Sands. The people are going for a prime offense conviction with mandatory life sentence. Prime offense means mandatory jury trial. If the client cannot provide an attorney, the court will provide one for him. I prefer to represent myself, Your Honor. No, he wouldn't, Your Honor. Yes, he would. This has been a very traumatic experience for him, Your Honor. Don't listen to him. I know who I am. I know who he is. Now, who the hell are you? Walter Bascom, Your Honor. I'm Mr. Cardigan's employer. I'm an independent contractor, Your Honor. I pay a salary. And I've seen less bickering in divorce court. Now, show me a defense attorney and we can get this moving. He should have been here by now. I can handle this. Your Honor, uh... Jake. What? I don't understand why you're going this alone. If I wanted you to know, I would have told you. Mandatory trial, Jake. Give yourself a fighting chance. I've got the best in the business. He'll dispose of this in no time. There's nothing to fight. But if it's going to make you feel better, and if it's going to move things along, fine. Mr. Cardigan's attorney is Eugene Leopold, Your Honor. He should have been here by now. Well, too late. Now, who's up next on rotation? Your Honor, I'm really sorry, but... Excuse me, can you not touch me, please? Excuse me, I am... Eugene Leopold for the defense, sir. Oh, Approach. Sorry, uh, sorry about the delay, sir. Mass transit is backed up, but this will not happen again. I get my driver's license next week. You've got to be kidding. <laughs> Talia McKenzie, right? We're all about you. Have you? Yeah. People versus Franchise Construction. You used the inverse corroboration defense I pioneered in Watchtel versus Illinois. Top of his class in the accelerated program, Your Honor. Trust me. Well, I'm sure we all do, Mr. Bascom. Have the courtroom ready for trial this afternoon. Well, see you in court, Junior. You know, I do very well with taller women. Hi. I'm Eugene Leopold. I'm your lawyer. Can we get to work, please? Sure you don't need a snack first? Milk and cookies? Lollipop? You've got to stretch those skin grafts, darling. If they stiffen up, you'll feel pain with every move. With you as the drink, I don't mind a little pain as a chaser. Let me take it off. I can't stop you. As our business is done here, I'm having my face rebuilt. You can have it done now. Any doctor you want, man or woman, will come here if I insist on it. Not yet. I must stay focused on this. I had a handsome face. On my own, you know. I had a body that moved like a wild cat. And I didn't need to wear no stinking morph mask. You still don't. Not for me. It doesn't matter what you think. I vow to make him pay for this. I waited for the day I see Jake Cardigan kneel in the sweat of his own fear before me. Then we must make your revenge glorious. 
You shall rise like a phoenix. Jay Cardigan's ashes. <laughs> I just can't believe that guy's actually your boyfriend. So I relate. Eugene thought we should get food for everyone, so we stopped at Doggy Burger. It's Boogie Burger, and it happens to be the tastiest artificial beef around. How can you two argue about food at a time like this? What would you like us to argue about? How about what size plaque to get Jake for being most stubborn man of the year? You got nothing from him, huh? Family Burger, this must be Sid. I can't eat, man. Not till I make some sense of this. To make sense of the clients of mule. No offense. Okay, look, we all agree on one thing, right? No way Jake murdered Bennett Sounds. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. Guy moves in and his ex wife tries to adopt his kid. You tell me. No way. I was with Jake when he had good reasons to kill Sands and he backed off. Then why didn't he just say that? Why do girls go nuts for me? It's another of the imponderables of life. So maybe we make him talk. Works for me. Sintra, Jake's got a vid in his cell. If you can figure out a way to blow past the power lock, I'll get a word with him. Yeah, and that's a class D felony, Sid. Only if someone presses charges, Sintra. It'll take a minute or so. Let's think about this. Now, did Cardigan and Bennett Sands lock horns at all in the past few days? I don't know what Jake's been up to lately. He wouldn't talk to me. How about you? All he said was he had a case he couldn't talk about. I didn't press. I piped a surge down Jake's line. It's leaning pretty hard on the transmission switch. Give it a kick. Dead on. Hello, Jake. Well, should have known. Sancho, how are you? Hey, Cardigan. How's prison life treating you? Have you made any new friends yet? I'm in solitary. I'd like to keep it that way. Jake, come on, man. Five minutes. Our friendship's got to be worth that much. Sit so, buddy. Someday you'll forgive me. Wrong. Now, you and I both know you wouldn't ventilate stands like that. Like I told Winger, I'm guilty. Guilty? Like a guilty conscience. But you never said you shot Bennett. Now, I know how you think. No, you don't. Now, listen to me. If you got some deep, dark secret that this case is going to dredge up, you got to trust us to handle it. Trust me. Sorry, old buddy. You have to find somebody else to beat your butt in racquetball. Man, if you screw this oh, up, I'm fine. Jake, you'll never get out! I'm sorry, ma'am. You are a nice lady. Sid, he needs us. You see, that's the difference between you and me. I got a hard time forcing people to accept my help. Who are you worried about? Yourself or Jake? I gotta get some air. Sid! All right, none of this glum stuff. So my client isn't exactly talking to me, but if there's one thing I've learned in all my years' experience, it's that if you don't have the facts, you have to dance around them. Well, I hope for Jake's sake, you know some pretty fancy steps. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, settle back, relax, enjoy yourselves. It's true, justice is sometimes hard to come by, but not in this case. As I will show you during the course of this trial, Jake Cardigan has provided all the evidence we need to convict him of murder. Last night, Bennett Sands was at Cosmo's headquarters at approximately 2,100 hours. He was shot with an energy pulse gun at about 10 feet. We also know from Mr. Cardigan himself that he was present at the time of the murder. Objection, Your Honor. There is no uncontested evidence that puts Mr. Cardigan there. Sustained. There's a DNA scan. I'm going to contest that scan. 
There is Mr. Cardigan's own testimony recorded on the NeuroTrack truth detector. He says he was there and he shot Bennett Sands. The statements were not recorded by police on NeuroTrack. I cannot present my opening remarks, Your Honor, if this boy keeps interrupting. Your Honor, showing a holograph based on contested evidence is prejudicial to my client. I want you to declare a mistrial. You know, you're both trying my patience. Request for mistrial denied. And I object to the prosecutor referring to me as boy? Sustained. I hate to admit it, but not bad. That's oh, just smoking mirrors. We're going to lose if you don't talk to me. Do I get to pick the subject? You want a couple pointers on how to hit on Talia McKenzie? So, were you like biologically engineered to be stubborn? Just tell me this. What does she see in you? Beth, I mean, do you ever think about how she's gonna feel with you back in the freezer? Cram it, Eugene. Come on, move it. You know, the next time you get thought out, she'll be long gone. That is, if you ever get thought out. Freak. There. Johnny Matuza's man. Skating too damn close to my action. He's obviously trying to scan all the details on Bennett Sands' murder. Which means... the Matuza doesn't trust me. After all you're doing for the Tech Lords, the power that you're going to share with them. For a price, of course. Even so, this kind of bad faith makes me very angry. Very angry. We must focus that anger, darling. I need to send a message to Matusa. And I shall be your messenger. Jake! <laughs> no! Jake, I love you. <laughs> Where'd you find that? In his police file. I haven't seen Kate in months. How's she doing? Thanks. She's still fighting that computer virus that almost killed her. She's at the clinic in Switzerland. Jake checks in on her all the time. Does that bother you? It's not so much that. I just wish he could share more with me. I mean, Sid's upset because Jake's clammed up. Jake's probably told Sid things he would never dream of telling me. Yeah, you know, Beth, I think you're wrong. Jake's been a lot more open since he met you. If he is hiding something, I think you're the one who's going to have to get through to him. Well, I don't know where to start. <laughs> Dan's gotten so big since this was taken. Yeah, you can see a lot of his dad in him. Let's hope he doesn't lose him a second time. What did you say? I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything. No, before that. I said you can see a lot of Jake and Dan. They're starting to look similar. Yeah. <sighs> oh.
Hello, Jake. Jake? How'd you get in? I forged your signature on a conjugal visit request. I don't know, I let you in here. Might do some nasty things to me. <laughs> this is what your life is all about, isn't it, Jake? Tough it out with a few jokes. Refuse to admit that you might need help. Do things your own way. I may be cold. I warm up real well. No. You're not cold. Just the opposite. You're always protecting someone. Trying to, whether it's Sid or me yeah, or your family. It's not getting us anywhere. Come on. Are we being monitored? No, they temporarily shut down the cameras as long as you're wearing this. Here. Well, I won't waste the time for what I have to do, which is talk. Well, hey, if that's all you want me to do is listen, then uh, fine. Hey, my private conversations are protected while I'm in here. You were arrested because of a DNA scan of particles at the murder scene. It showed an 82% match with your genetic code, which is close enough for the cops. DNA traces degrade over time, Beth. This was less than an hour later. The truth is, if they hadn't restricted their matchup to known felons, they would have found a 100% match, but you didn't want them to do that. Hey, just, just, you don't know what you're doing. Okay, just just stay out of it. The police booked and charged the wrong person, Jake. This is who really killed Bennett Sounds. You're covering for your son. I'm still lost. Why would Dan want to kill Bennett? I mean, did he have any dirt on his stepfather? Danny told me Bennett threatened him. So I told him I'd take care of it. And I told Bennett to meet me at Cosmos. Danny! coming at me. He wouldn't stop. He's dead, isn't he? Yeah. So no doubt about that. I had to stop him. Take it easy, okay? Just here. I didn't mean to. Right. Just give me the gun. Come on. I had to stop him. Easy there. He had to stop him for what? Stop getting the gun. He's gonna kill you. What, what makes you say that? Sorry, Dad. Hey, wait! Dad. Bennett and Kate Sands' residence. Connect me to the housekeeper. All right, now don't say anything. Just listen to me. Dan's in trouble. He's on his way there. I want you to pack some of his clothes, and I want you to drive him to a lodge at Summit Beach. Then you stay there and you wait with him until I get in touch with you. Tell Dan that I am handling the problem. You understand? Good. Police dispatch. Want to report a murder. And here we are now. If that's what you'd call handling it, I'd love to see you botch something. Jake, we can help Dan, and without you sacrificing everything, there are other ways. No, there's no other way. My visitors are leaving now. 
You know, Jake, Danny is a juvenile with no previous criminal record. The penalty won't be unreasonable. No, you're not going to mention this to anybody. What I told you is covered by attorney-client privilege. That's not the way it works. Yeah, that's the way it works now. What I told you about Dan is confidential. I expect you to honor that. You understand me? Yeah, I understand you. Good. Now go on, get out of here. You know, I just hope I get a real killer next time. They're easier to deal with. One more minute. Okay, this is between you, me, and my little lawyer. Now you stay out of it. How can I stay out when I know the truth? Would you? Hey, Beth, you know, you hammer me because you tell me that I don't ask for help while I'm asking you for help. Now, listen, Dan, he's, he's in big, big trouble with the tech lords. Big trouble. Why? What's he done? I can't tell you that. Now, you still have access to your father's lab? Yeah, of course. Good. Come here. Detective Prosco, the police report said that you conducted a DNA scan which showed traces of another person who had come in contact with the deceased. Is that correct? Yes. It's routine to match a genetic trace against the database of known felons. And did you find a match? Yes. Jake Cardigan. Your witness? Yeah, I'm just giving some doubts about what happened here. Now let go of my own embarrassing me in front of the jury. Detective Prosco, that genetic match was only 82%, wasn't it? That's correct. And since you only checked the codes of known felons, isn't it possible that there's someone else, someone other than Jake Cardigan, who may have had a greater match? Yes, but it's statistically improbable. But it's possible, isn't yes, it? Yes, but I'm no telling you it's just... Court is adjourned until tomorrow, 9 a.m. Leo, it's me, Connie, the counselor from tech rehab. Oh, my Lord, you're not Leo. <laughs> Maybe I should get my eyes checked. I can't afford to make mistakes. Or my boss, Sonny Akuri, wouldn't like it. <laughs> gotcha. I wonder how many of those you could do with a size 14 shoe on your back. 550. Enough. <laughs> Boy, don't let anybody hear these days, huh? You signed the visit request form. Yeah, I guess I did, didn't I? My name is. What's up? Sent away. Uh, a lot of loose ends. Uh, I wish I would have tied up. Like apologizing to your best friend, things like that. Yeah, things like that. Well, yeah, she's uh, known you longer than anybody else. Hey, pardon. If you're gonna get all sloppy on me, I may toss my lunch. No, I just thought I should tell you that you've been a good friend, buddy. The best. You feel better. Yeah. Now, let me tell you something. When you found me, I was the lowest of the low. One day, the star of the NFL making more money than God. Next day, begging my bookie, two goons trying to break my kneecaps. Two very unlucky goons, as I recall. The point is, I let you help me when I needed it. And man, that wasn't easy. It was humiliating. But in the end, it was worth it. There's some things that you couldn't know, Sid. Like what? Tell me. Like you... I can't 
can't tell you. Tell me. I can't tell you. Tell me. Like about Dan Fritz and Bennett? You think I couldn't have handled that? Who told you? Beth. She's concerned about you too, Jay. She just puts up a little more than I do. See, it's not that I don't trust you. It's not even a matter of trust. When people know too much, it puts a bullseye on their back. I got a bit back. They probably wouldn't even hit any major organs. You see? It is about trust. I need your help. But I cannot ask for it now. Okay? Don't ask me. Sweet dreams. I'm done. Bennett Sands was not essential. He was just a greedy intermediary who got himself whacked. But you listen to me, Matuza, Rahim. I'm picking up the pieces. Be ready to bank your computers. Stealth Link will be retransmitted in two days. And then we are going to blast through the internet like the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The prosecution calls Walter Bascom to the stand. Walter Bascom to the stand. What do you do, Mr. Bascom? I own the Cosmo Security Agency. And in what capacity does the defendant serve? He is one of my operatives, my top operative. You have a high opinion of the defendant, don't you, Mr. Bascom? I hold Jake in the highest regard. So is Mr. Cardigan authorized to act on your behalf with Cosmo's clients? On occasion. Was Bennett Sands one of your clients? Stop these questions. How? I don't know how. What have you got to do to stop? Mr. Bascom, I repeat, was Bennett Sands one of your clients? Objection, Your Honor. It's totally irrelevant. Goes to Mr. Cardigan's motive. Your Honor, I'd like some leeway here. Objection overruled. Would you like me to repeat the question a third time? Please. Was Bennett Sands? One of your clients. It would be more accurate to say that we were working on the project. Was Mr. Cardigan working on the project the night he met Bennett Sands at Cosmos? I don't understand the question. I think the question is clear. Perhaps I'm a little dense. Then maybe I'll speak slowly. Did you know that Jake Cardigan and Bennett Sands were meeting that night? Answer the question, Mr. Bascom. What are you just what are you, what are you talking about? What are you talking oh, 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 Get this man in handcuffs. Judge Edmund Saruda has ordered the jury sequestered after Jake Cardigan went berserk. Everyone else was barred from the courtroom. The judge, defense attorney, and the prosecutor are now meeting in closed session. I should know better than to rely on the news for my information. I should have planted a microcam inside that courtroom. 
I'll get you inside, Sonny. You're telling me you staged this ruckus just to stop Bascom from testifying? I'm afraid so, Your Honor. And you're telling me, Bascom, that you wanted him to do it? Well, I didn't plan it that way, but I'm certainly glad he found a way to create a distraction. A distraction? That's when my wife tunes in the opera when I'm trying to watch a ball game. By my court standards, gentlemen, this was World War III. I agree, Your Honor. Someone could have been hurt. Could have? Your Honor, let me explain. Uh, you can do all your explaining at your next trial, and I'm personally going to file all the charges. Uh, Your Honor, perhaps I can make sense of this whole thing. <sighs> Let's hear it. I was being pressed for information that couldn't come out in open court. So this is the project that you were working on with Bennett Sands? The project is a new kind of software that can rip through any computer network in the country. It's called Stealth Link because it can't be detected. There's no defense against it. In the wrong hands, it can strip a city of its power, leaving it an empty shell without water, transportation, heat. It's the ultimate ransom tool. Bennett Sands was stealing it from the government to resell it to the tech lords. We found out about this from Jake's son only a few days ago. If Sentra were here, we'd be done by now. Keep breathing down my neck. I'm going to take the day off, too. Hey, buddy, what's up? I have a problem, a big problem. Some kind of trouble? Yeah, I was sort of rummaging through Bennett's PC, and he came home and caught me. What did he do? Well, first, I think you better take a look at these files. He doesn't know, but I downloaded it to my PC. That's when we found out about Stealth Link. Someone working for the government contract was going to transmit it to Bennett at a secret location. Bennett, in turn, would retransmit it to the tech lords. Bennett came home and caught me reading the stuff. I told him he was a real bloodsucker for selling out the country for a few billion credits. Your son's got guts. That's when he told me he wasn't selling out the country. He was actually selling out the tech lords. So he was double-crossing him, but how? I don't know. He didn't say. He just told me that I should shut up about it, or he'd... Or he'd what? rip my tongue out and if he didn't get me the tech lords would he said they'd kill him and then they'd come after me and you i got scared and i ran out you did the right thing by telling me and i'll take care of bennett danny i will never let anything happen to you you know that yeah i know dad i'm really sorry no don't be sorry i'm proud of you Boy, I ain't gonna pound Bennett's drum so hard he's gonna hear the beat for the rest of his life. That's one way to go. Oh, you got some way to turn this around to your advantage. Not to my advantage, but think about it, Jay. Bennett double crosses the tech lords. He's gonna have to grab onto any hand given to him, even ours. The answer is no. This is personal. Jake, this is our one chance to turn someone high up state's evidence against the tech lords hey i would love to get back at the tech lords if it wasn't for them i would have never gone to cryo i'd still have my family but but what what better way to deal with bennett by controlling his future he turns to us we protect him we send the whole stinking load of tech lords into the freezer hey if danny was safe i'd love to get them all we'd go along with bennett's plan and catch the tech lords in the act of receiving the stolen government property biggest crime bust in years. But we still have a shot, even with Bennett dead. That's why we couldn't tip our hand in court. When is Stealthlink being transferred to the tech lords? In the next 48 hours. Unfortunately, we don't know where. Bennett took that information to the grave. Your Honor, I move that all charges against Mr. Cardigan be dropped in light of the fact that Bennett's death involves national security. No, 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 no. Nice try. I'm willing to drop Mr. Baskin from the witness list. But the people are going to insist that the trial proceeds, Your Honor. <laughs> so ruled. Court resumes tomorrow. 
but the remainder of the trial will be held in closed session. No press, no cameras. You're Kylie Roman. Yes. I never miss your show. Oh, then you've been following the cardigan trial. Well, I was until they cut us off. How do you feel? Wonderful. Sonny would love you, too. Maybe when we're through, I'll bring you to him as a special treat. Sure. Anything you want. For now, simply this. The next time you're in court, when you say or hear the words, I'm staying focused, you'll be talking to us. Lights to level six. Help me pull some carts out of storage. Beth, why did we have to leave the lodge? You know, at least there I could have got some fresh air. Well, your father decided that this would be best. We're gonna have to trust him. Can I get you anything? A normal life. I'll see what I have in storage. Does your mother know about any of this? No. How's she doing, Dan? Well, she's not expected to be released from the clinic in Geneva anytime soon. Um, she's still really dazed. And always there, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, that computer virus hit her pretty hard. Just glad she's not here right now. Dan, maybe she should be told about what's happening. The police don't know how to reach her, but you do. Oh, yeah. What am I going to say? Oh, Mom, I forgot. I killed your second husband, and I'm letting the first one take the rap. It's your call. Look, Dan, I know it's hard, but if you're in trouble, she'd want to know. She loves you. What is there to love? All that's left for me is years of psychotherapy. Prison. Or both. Look, we're not going to let that happen, OK? I think what's really bothering you right now is that your dad is covering for you. It's like, I don't have the guts to take responsibility for what I did. Your father knows you do. He just wants to protect you. Right or wrong, that's his way of showing how he feels. What do I get to show how I feel? got everything under control, darling. Did you find out what we missed? Yes, I did an audio tap through the wall. Cardigan's son hacked into Bennett's computer and copied the stealth link files. There's a chance those files could give us away. Get the boy's computer and destroy it. The boy, too. I'm on my way. Sure you're safe. This call could be traced. You know, if you have to reach us, you should do it through Eugene. I just wanted to see Danny and uh, make sure he's doing okay. He's okay. It's all pretty hard on him, but don't worry. He's strong, like his father. Hey, wait one second. <sighs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm right there. Oh. It's been uh, having these attacks that come and go, but I'm all right now. 
After all this is over, I'm gonna take care of you. You have an unscheduled visitor. Move to the center of the room. Eugene. Well, you didn't have to come back here. You've done all you can. I couldn't live with myself if you ended up back in cryo. Well, I could, but it'd be tough. Well, you've done all you can, so... You know, Jake, in all my years' experience, I've never taken failure lying down. Eugene, how long has that been exactly, huh? Jake, uh, I have to talk to the judge and Dan testifies tomorrow. We can protect him. He'll appear by holographic projection. He swore that you were going to pull this on me. You know, it was his idea. He risked his neck to get in touch with me. No! I'm sorry, Jake. You're going to have to trust me. Hey! Hey, I'll come right through those bars. I'll rip your little lungs right out! I'll call Dan and I and tell him to get ready. You dig? Since my arrest, I've been having these anxiety attacks. Let go of me. And I got to thinking, you almost never hear anybody going back to cryo for a second time. Why is that, Doc? I don't know. What's the deal, huh? What, do I go crazy before I get back to the freezer? Is that what it is? What the hell's in my head? Him too. Deep memory manipulation. So as long as my brain is just laying there, you might as well tinker with it, is that it? Something like that. When an ex-con even thinks about committing a crime, you relive your worst fears. The ugly thoughts that have been pent up in your subconscious force themselves to the surface. It can be quite painful. And this pain uh, goes away when, when I'm either convicted or freed. Is that it? If you make it till then, yes. I think you're guilty. The jury's going to decide that, too. Before the judge kicked us out? Oh, the courtroom's empty. You know I'm legit. I, I, I just need a nanosecond. Okay, have a good evening. Listen, do you think we could keep my client in cuffs for now, please? If you think that's necessary. You know, my profile's already screwed up. I'd like to save what's left of it. Uh, let's leave those on until Mr. Cardigan convinces us he can behave himself. Thanks. <laughs> Is 
Lieutenant Winger, how many blasts were fired from the energy pulse gun found at the scene of the crime? One. You're sure of that? The gun has a data file, and it indicates only one blast was fired. Now, does an energy blast leave any kind of trace other than a wound? Yes. There's a cloud of ionized atoms that float near the point of impact. Now, where did you find this cloud? In and around the body itself. Funny, your report states that there was another cloud of ions found at the scene of the crime. Hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. The forensic lab decided that the ion reader could have malfunctioned. Now, your report states that the gun was found three feet from the body. Yet that same report also states that the shot had to have been fired from at least ten feet away. The gun must have been moved after it was fired. And how do you know this? The impact at three feet would have wiped out Bennett's trunk, severing the upper body from the legs. Ouch. So is that pretty much how it happened? Pretty much. And you have no doubts about where the gun was fired from? This distance is consistent with the size of the wound, which is exactly four and three-eighths of an inch in diameter. No other distance would render a wound this size. Thanks. My pleasure. Mine. No further questions, but I may want to recall the witness later. said, Jake, you gotta trust me. You know, when it comes to my son, I don't. with Court News 921. But we just heard that the remainder of trial will be held in closed session. No spectators, no press. I'm staying focused. Just like I told you, darling. That is, everything is focused on this trial and the presence of a secret witness. We'll know more after today's closed door session. Nice. Very nice. I was guessing at the modulation game. I'll have our little Miss Roman adjust the transmission. <laughs> You're feeling better. Skin grabs have begun healing. I feel it. The heat of your thoughts. It's enough to seal your wounds. They say revenge is a dish best served cold. But not for me. No. It must be hot. As hot as the fire that seared your flesh. Have you found the cardigan boy? I'm scanning that even as we speak. I can do more than one thing at once. You want me to heal? Find the boy. Go. You know, you should rest during recess. That's what I used to do. That's very funny, Eugene. No, seriously. Is Danny... Ready and hold on yeah, like up everything's yet. taken no. care of. Everything's taken care of. Yeah, well, I want to talk to him before he goes on the stand. It's amazing. You, you still don't trust me, do you, Jake? All right, Eugene, let's trust each other, okay? You let me talk to Dan, and I guarantee you that I will not disrupt the courtroom again. Please. Hold on, link up. Hey, listen, Dan. You're gonna Danny, be how you doing? In about three or four minutes, but uh, your dad. How you doing? Nervous. 
Well, look, you know, you don't have to do this for me. You know that. But Dad, if I don't testify, you're going to go back to crowd detention. <sighs> yeah, but maybe I'll get lucky. Huh? Maybe it can happen. Dad, I did it. I can't let you cover for me. It's eating me up inside. It was a mistake, an accident. But it was my accident. You've got to let me deal with this. I don't want to be a coward. It's not what you taught me. Yeah, except then. See, I wasn't finished teaching you. There's this whole other thing about being a man. It's called being a father. I don't need to know about that right now. This isn't school. Yeah, well, it, it kind of is. You see, my job as a father is to protect you so that maybe someday you'll grow up and you'll teach your kid. Your job is to stay alive. That's the only way I get a passing grade. Annie, look at me. I love you. I don't want you to do this. Dan, I need a word with your father. Someone's trying to trace her vid phone calls. They haven't succeeded yet, but it's just a matter of time. All right, then be prepared to get out as soon as the circus is over. Okay. Now, Bennett was mad at you, correct? Yeah. I hacked into his PC and read his files. When was the next time you saw him? The night he was killed. I went over to his house because I left some books there. I heard him talking on the vid phone to my dad. They said they were going to meet at Cosmos that night. I confronted Bennett. I told Valkyrie. him he was doing a terrible thing. The boys in court has a holograph. Credits. Check the feet out of the courthouse. And that's when he pulled out his gun. When Bennett got his gun, I thought he was going to go and kill Dad. So I decided to go to Cosmos and warn him. How'd you get into Cosmos? Well, I used my computer on the lock and hacked my way in. Then Bennett showed up. He was really mad and told me to get out. I said I'd go if he did. And then he hit me. What'd you do then? Well, there was a pulse gun on the computer. So I grabbed it and I said, if he didn't get out, I'd shoot. He just laughed. And then he, uh, he... Take your time, Dan. He grabbed me and threw me against the wall. He kept coming after me. I told him to stop, but he wouldn't. So... I closed my eyes. And I fired. Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. Your Honor, well Dan Cardigan is present. I'd like to recall Officer Winger to the stand, please. Granted. Lieutenant Winger to the stand. Good work, Dan. The kid is at a lab owned by a doctor, Leon Kittredge. Do you know where it is? Yes. I can be there in 10 minutes. Dan, do you remember how far away you were when you fired the pulse gun? Yeah, about three feet. Show us. Lieutenant Winger, didn't you say the shot came from 10 feet away? Yes. Look where Dan is. And look where you say the shot was fired. It killed Ben Sands. How could Dan have fired that shot? He couldn't have done it. But he says he did fire a shot. Now, what do you think could have happened to it? He must have missed. And knowing he missed, what do you now have to say about the second cloud of ionized atoms referred to in your police report? I would say the second cloud came from the shot Dan fired. So, Dan is standing three feet away holding this gun. And you already testified it was fired only once. And he missed, creating the second cloud of ionized atoms. What does that tell you about this gun? not the gun that killed
killed Bennett Sands. Your Honor, I ask that you strike that last statement. This is based on evidence not previously made available to the people. Not true, Your Honor. Ms. McKenzie opened this area herself when she used Lieutenant Winger as a witness for the people. Mr. Leopold, don't make me lecture you in court. If you depose this witness on this line of testimony, then Ms. McKenzie should have been aware of this. Your Honor, this is the first time either this witness or my client have mentioned this issue. The little snot is lying. Then subpoena me and give me a neuroscan. Mr. Cardigan, and I remind you, you're still under oath. Were you aware that Mr. Leopold was using this line of defense? No. No, sir, Your Honor. This is, uh, this is the first time that I've heard this. Approach the bench, both of you. Now. Cardigan still could have stood 10 feet away and fired the shot that killed Bennett. But he could not have done it with that gun. So he used a different weapon. Big deal. This proves nothing. Your Honor, the evidence is so substantial Penny. that it's evidentiary You know what this means? That I killed him. I pulled the trigger. I no, saw it. You closed your eyes. You pulled the trigger. And you missed. Somebody else got him. I couldn't have missed. I'm sorry. You missed. But they're still going to say it's you. They've got to know I'm the killer. Son, are you trying to cover for me the way I covered for you? The fact is, neither of us did it. But they're still going to hang you for it. Dad, I don't want to lose you. You're not going to lose me. What do you say we let Eugene handle the whole thing? If you keep this up, you can be... You trust him to do that? Yeah, I do now. Your Honor, my client is charged with using this gun, serial number 29854106. It says so specifically in the charges filed by Ms. McKenzie. Technicality. Unfortunately, it's not. If you'd filed a broader charge, we could continue. This case is on hold. If you want, you can refile charges against Mr. Cardigan. You're joking. Do I look like I'm joking? Have your client complete Form L-1070 and it's free to go. Your Honor, I object. It'll only take me a few hours to refile. Then you'd better get to work. Hey, what happened with the hole link up with my son? He wants to cut it off. Hey, we're not oh, finished until yeah. I say so. Stop that man. Let me get him. Run, run, right. just go. Oh, Shit, stand your trap. Right back to left. Sit, don't get into this now. Just get over there now. Oh, get him out of there. All right. All right, I'm on it. Just in time. <laughs> well, when you say you're going to help, you sure know how to deliver, don't you? Well, it's too soon to congratulate ourselves. <laughs> oh. Welcome back. Thanks. Well, let's get going, okay? I only got a couple hours of freedom. Hey, what happened to Sid? I sent him to track you down. He's on hold. I'll, uh, get out of your way. Hey, buddy. Oh, looks like you're having a coffee clatch while I'm stuck here in the boondocks. Did you see the tech lords at Beth's lab? No, but they sure left their mark. Yeah, they probably tapped into a closed court session when Bascom was talking about Stealth Link. All I knew was it involved a curry. I assume that's why you wouldn't fill me in. That wasn't my idea, Sid. That was the feds. They wanted to fake Bennett's death, turn him back over to them, and then they were going to put him into the witness protection program. So, when police arrested you and put you on Neurotrack, and they asked you if you bought the gun to shoot Bennett Sands... I said yes, and that was the truth. Only we were faking his death. And then somebody really kills Bennett in a way that incriminates you and down. Yeah, and I got a feeling I know who that somebody is, and so does Sid. Yeah, son of her curry. Since you wouldn't spill, I took the liberty of checking out everyone who's come in and out of that courtroom, and check them against known Hokuri operatives. So what'd you come up with? Zip. 
which tells me he's getting his information another way. All right, well, we got three hours to find out how before I got to get back to the court. I'm on it, partner. All right. Okay, so we know Sonny thinks Dan has some sort of important information. Like what? Like where and when Stealthling is going to be transferred to the tech lords. Hey, Danny, you still have a copy of Bennett's files on your computer, right? Yeah, they're saved under stealth. Well, good. Come on, bring them up here. Let's go. There is no more reference to a specific weapon. Yeah, and now you have no evidence against Cardigan whatsoever. There's plenty. You can't even put him in the room at the time of the murder. I'll have to put you in a room. All right, all right, all right. Knock it off, you two. Miss Mackenzie, this new murder charge is flimsy stuff. I'm dismissing the jury and declaring a mistrial. What? Then, Your Honor, I'm free to go, right? Wrong. But, Your Honor, he's not charged with anything. He is, with contempt for that near riot he caused yesterday. Thanks. Yes, but I apologize, Your Honor. Oh, how polite of you. You're still getting another 24 hours it's in prison. It's still a matter of stealth, Link. I've, got, I've run out of time. i got a lot of things I've got to do. Then do them from prison. Take him back to his cell. Cardigan is free after tomorrow. You name the day, I'll break him like a twig. That's what you said about his son. Sonny, you know I'll do whatever you want. I can't depend on you anymore. I need to stand on my own two feet. And you will, in time. Now is the time. I want Stealthlink, and I want Cardigan dead! <laughs> <sighs> Who says you can't have it all? It's crazy, huh? Yeah, stir crazy. I guess that's why they call it that. Uh, Eugene Leopold, ready to be escorted out, please. Uh, I'll check in with you in the morning. Okay, good night. Night. You want something? putting your name on my visitors list. They keep joking, Cardigan. Maybe there'll still be a smile on your face when I separate it from your head. Well, you could have killed me the night you killed Bennett Sands. What makes you think you got the guts now, Sonny? I didn't kill Bennett, but I did give the order. Well, he was a bigger fool than you. Trying to double cross the tech lords. I suspected it from the start. Especially after I got word of Bennett's meeting with you. You might as well know, Jake. I sent a friend of mine down to Cosmos. I'm not gonna let you kill Dad. Danny, go home. Hey, I've got this gun. I know how to use it. I'm telling you, give me that gun and get out of here. No. I know what you're up to. You don't know a thing. This is my business. My operative carried a multi-turret gun. 
capable of mimicking any weapon you two might have. Danny, I warned you! I know how to use it, I'll shoot you! See, my plan was to make it appear that you and Bennett had killed each other. And we were dealt a wild card. My son. I give the boy credit. He was ready to shoot Bennett, which was more than what you would have done. When it was obvious that he couldn't hit the side of a truck, he helped him out. You do this to my son, you low life piece of crap. You took away my badge, you set me up for a cryo sentence. Up till then, I only hated you for what you stood for. But now that you did this to my son, you created a monster, Sonny. You think you know about monsters, Jake? Good look for you. Take a good look, Cardigan. The explosion you caused at the generating plants here to half my skin off. Don't talk to me about monsters. You've caused me a lot of agony, and now you're gonna die for it. You got all that shit? Oh yeah. And some great close-ups. The judge is gonna love the show. Ah. We knew you'd be watching, Sonny. You're as big a dope as I thought you were. You set up the minute you walked into this room, Sonny. Jake, Jake, it's over. It's over, Jake. Don't blow it. Think about Danny. Come on, man. Should have killed me, Jake. I'm not through with you. All right, you're a free man. Yeah, he could have killed him, Sid. But bare hands, no regrets. Hey, thanks for sticking by me, partner. I've been calling for five minutes straight. Where have you been? What's up? Center's picked through the files in Dan's computer. She found out where Stealth Link is being sent. So where's the party? Here. Right here. Bennett plans to use Cosmo's computer. <laughs> I should have guessed. It's the only one around powerful enough. Hey, Beth, who's there with you right now? Um, Center went to get Bascom. I'm here with Dan. You get Danny, and you get out of there right away. Jake? Jake? Jake, listen. Sonny just escaped. He had someone on the inside. Took out several of my officers. All right, he's on his way over to Cosmos. Get a whole platoon in there. And pray they get there before we do. Check the other offices.
looking for him. have stealth link that's what you want jake move sid put that gun down he's gonna kill danny anyway move put it down sid put it down it's mine jake the other tech lords are entering the net Cardigan? Sonny, come on, take me. Let the boy go. Dad, no. Sonny, listen to me. What you've got is junk. It isn't worth a keystroke. Stealth link doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, Beth, come on. Try to bluff me. You know why you were able to steal Stealth Link? Because the contractor wanted you to. To escape blame for its failure. No! You're lying. Bennett, Bennett had it all worked out. Bennett found out after he sold it to the tech lords. 
But then he couldn't bring himself to give back all those billions. So that was the double cross, huh? And you're a marked man, Sonny. Just like Bennett was. No! Come on, let Danny go. We'll make you the same deal that we made Bennett. No! You're lying. Tell me you're lying, Bascom! Look at him, Sonny. Go ahead, look at him. Look at him right in the eye. Doesn't even care enough to lie. We were both double-crossed. We're both in the same boat, Sonny. For the first time, you and me are both in the same boat. said he was going to be okay. Yeah, it's a bit early for rigor mortis to set in. Well, you're starting to worry more than me. Oh. I want you to go home. I'm going to be home in a little while, right? You mind taking him there, Sid? i got to have a few words with the boss. Sure, but I'm going to hate missing those few words. <laughs> Again, right now, Inspector Hollowell is busting the top tech lords in the biggest crime sweep of the century. You should have trusted me. That's what Sid said to you. He got over it. Take some time off, get some rest, see how it all shakes out. Well, here's how it shakes out for me. <laughs> well, that's what it takes to make you happy. It's a start. Say the devil's in the detail. 
walking in the wasteland With a ghost in the machine There's a simulated sunset And starlight in my eyes the Skies are filled with miracles And a half of them are lying Are you real or not? It's a fine line Are you ready or not? For the light of day Are you real or not? These are strange times And I don't want to live this way When you wake up from a nightmare And it's worse when you're awake and There's no one you can turn to And there's nothing you can take You better ask yourself Are you real or not? It's a fine night Are you ready or not? For the light of day Are you real or not? These are strange times And I don't want to look this way Mighty Cosmos Security Agency. How good could their security be to have a murder here? If their caller was on the level. Shots fired, male victim killed. Here we go. White male, approximately 50 years old. Blast hole in the thorax, approximately four inches. Shot from about 10 feet away with an energy pulse gun. I'll ID with a retinal scan. Don't bother. His name's Bennett Sands. Sands? I guess a couple of billion credits doesn't save you from having your heart incinerated. The question is, by who? There's no sign of forced entry. Do a DNA scan. There's still a strong genetic trace. Someone got pretty close to him in the last hour. Punch it up. Jake Cardigan. Didn't you work with him before? I put him away once. I can do it again. Call the precinct. I want him brought in. Winger. Save you the trouble. I'm already here. 
I told Sands to meet me here. We were involved in some business together. What kind of business? Software. This was next to the body. You got this to shoot Bennett Sands with, didn't you? Yeah, that's what I got it for. So, when Sands walked in, what happened? You argued first. Or did you just shoot him in cold blood? I told you I'm guilty. Say it, Cardigan. You took aim at his chest and you blew a hole in it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, something like that. You've got to be kidding. <laughs> Tie him again, you, right? We're all about you. Have you? Yeah. People were French all construction. You used the inverse corroboration defense I pioneered in Watchtel versus Illinois. Top of his class in the accelerated program, Your Honor. Trust me. Well, I'm sure we all do, Mr. Bascom. Have the courtroom ready for trial this afternoon. Well, see you in court, Junior. You know, I do very well with taller women. Hi. I'm Eugene Leopold. I'm your lawyer. Can we get to work, please? Sure you don't need a snack first? Milk and cookies? Lollipop? You've got to stretch those skin grafts, darling. If they stiffen up, you'll feel pain with every move. With you as the drink, I don't mind a little pain as a chaser. Let me take it off. I can't stop you. As our business is done here. How do you plead? I plead guilty, Your Honor. Miss McKenzie, any chance of saving the taxpayers some money on this one? Your Honor, Mr. Cardigan was arrested last night for the murder of Bennett Sands. The people are going for a prime offense conviction with mandatory life sentence. Prime offense means mandatory jury trial. If the client cannot provide an attorney, the court will provide one for him. I prefer to represent myself, Your Honor. No, he wouldn't, Your Honor. <laughs> yes, he would. This has been a very traumatic experience for him, Your Honor. Don't listen to him. I know who I am. I know who he is. Now, who the hell are you? Walter Bascom, Your Honor. I'm Mr. Cardigan's employer. I'm an independent contractor, Your Honor. I pay a salary. And I've seen less bickering in divorce court. Now show me a defense attorney and we can get this moving. He should have been here by now. I can handle this. Your Honor, uh... Jake. What? I don't understand why you're going this alone. If I wanted you to know, I would have told you. Mandatory trial, Jake. Give yourself a fighting chance. I've got the best in the business. He'll dispose of this in no time. There's nothing to fight. But if it's going to make you feel better and if it's going to move things along, fine. Mr. Cardigan's attorney is Eugene Leopold, Your Honor. He should have been here by now. Well, too late. Now, who's up next on rotation? Your Honor, I'm really sorry, but... Excuse me, can you not touch me, please? Excuse me, I am... Eugene Leopold for the defense, sir. <laughs> what? Oh, Approach. 
sorry about the delay, sir. Mass transfer's backed up, but this will not happen again. I get my driver's license next week. You want to try it again? It doesn't matter. I said I did it. It matters if I say it matters, my friend. This time I want enough evidence to have you freeze-dried and stuck on a rack for good. still get to see your kid before you get thought out. You don't cooperate. And you'll be sleeping on ice into the next century. Maybe someone will be around to throw you out. Maybe not. I told you I did it. You got that, you dumb mech? Now fuck me! This is Kylie Roman. This is Kylie Roman. Hi, 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 Wiley Roman with... Cable This is Kylie Roman for Cable 921 with Round the Clock Live courtroom drama. This morning, former police officer and ex-convict Jake Cardigan is being arraigned for the murder of billionaire entrepreneur Bennett Sands. Because of Cardigan's previous conviction in the murders of three police officers, he faces the maximum term in cryogenic detention. Yes. Jake, I talked to Bascom and he's getting you a lawyer. <sighs> Tell me to forget it. Can you give us a minute? Look, you gotta let us help. I, for one, am not gonna stand by and watch you self-destruct. I need to get this over with as soon as I can. Don't even try to understand. Let's go. Jake, you can't go away again. I love you. 